everyone, and welcome to QuickBooks Enterprise Demonstration. My name is Rayanne Salter with Mining My Books. I've been working with QuickBooks software for over 20 years. I've helped over hundreds of businesses implement QuickBooks Enterprise. I specialize in finding what specific needs you require for your business and if QuickBooks Enterprise is a good fit, we then work with you, your staff, and accountant during the implementation process. Also, since I'm a QuickBooks solution provider, I am able to meet or beat subscription pricing better than if you purchase from Intuit directly from their telesales channel or online through their website. Another benefit is that I will give you up to five free hours of help with QuickBooks Enterprise implementation. What you're looking at now is the home screen. The home screen is divided into group sections. You have the vendor section for accounts payable activities. There's a customer section for accounts receivable activities. There's an employee section for time and payroll functions. There's a company section where you'll find your items, services, and chart of accounts. Then the banking section where you'll write checks, enter credit card charges, and reconcile your accounts. We're going to start by taking a look at some of the features that allow you to track more detail about your business. So we will start with the items list. The items list is where you record your items and services. Those will include service items, inventory parts if you need to track the quantity, inventory assemblies if you do manufacturing. There are non-inventory parts if you don't need to track inventory in quantity. Then we have other charge items. You can subtotal items. You can create group items that are similar to kits. You can have discount items and payment items. If you charge sales tax, you have sales tax items and sales tax groups. All of those belong on your items list. Keep in mind that the QuickBooks Pro and Premier, your items list is limited to 14,500 total items. Whereas in QuickBooks Enterprise, we've increased that to 1 million items. Earlier I mentioned custom fields in QuickBooks Enterprise. You can create custom fields that greater define your items. In Pro and Premier versions, you're limited to five custom fields. In QuickBooks Enterprise, we've increased it to 15 custom fields. In QuickBooks Enterprise, we allow you to choose what sort of information can go into that field so you can choose a particular date format and you can also create a multiple choice list. We also give you the ability to require the use of custom fields on transactions or when you create a new items list. Now let's go to the home screen. Next we'll talk about the names list. The names list includes a customer jobs list that you see here. There is also a vendors list, an employees list. In QuickBooks Pro and Premier software, our names list is limited to 14,500 total names. And again, in our QuickBooks Enterprise, we've increased that to 1 million. You can also create custom fields for names. With QuickBooks Pro and Premier software, you're allowed to create a maximum of 15 total custom fields, but you can only have a maximum of seven for any one list type. For example, you can have seven custom fields for customers, seven for vendors, and one for employee. In QuickBooks Enterprise, we've increased that to 30 total custom fields with a maximum of 12 for any one name type. Again, we've given you the ability to choose what sort of information can go into those custom fields, including the ability to create that multiple choice list. 
And again, we've given you the ability to require the use on transactions and list. Next is our chart of accounts. In the Pro and Premier software, the chart of accounts is limited to 10,000 accounts. In QuickBooks Enterprise, we've increased that to 100,000. Now let's go back to our home screen. Next is a class list. Classes allow you to see the profitability by any significant portion of your business. Then you can run a profit and loss by class, or you can even run a balance sheet by class. In our QuickBooks Pro and Premier software, you are limited to 10,000 classes in QuickBooks. In QuickBooks Enterprise, we've increased that to 100,000 classes. QuickBooks Enterprise also allows you to assign a default class. You can assign a default class to either accounts, items, or names. Next in list, you have your fixed assets items list in QuickBooks. In QuickBooks, you're allowed to record your fixed assets. QuickBooks Enterprise also includes a fixed asset manager. The Fixed Asset Manager allows you to easily report on your depreciation of your fixed assets. And with just a couple of clicks, you can then post those journal entries right into QuickBooks Enterprise. Next in list is the Price Level List. Price levels allow you to create custom pricing. There are two different types of price levels. There is a fixed percentage, which allows you to mark all of your items up or down by a percentage amount. And then you have per item pricing. Per item prices allow you to create custom pricing for individual items in our pro level software. Only fixed price levels are available. Per item prices are available in Premier and in both Pro and Premier are limited to 100 price levels. In QuickBooks Enterprise, we offer 750. Next, we'll talk about advanced pricing. Advanced pricing is included in the Platinum subscription of QuickBooks Enterprise. To enable it, we'll go to Edit, Preferences, Sales and Customers, Company Preferences, and we'll mark Enable Advanced Pricing. Click OK to go back to the home screen. After it's been enabled, we can go to List and choose the Price Rule List. QuickBooks has converted all of their price levels to price rules. Price rules allow you to set custom pricing based on a multiple number of criteria you can select based on items, customers, class, or sales rep. You can create a start date and an end date, and you can set the price to either a percent or amount lower or higher than your base cost. I have a separate video that will go into more of a detailed demonstration of the advanced pricing feature. Next, We'll talk about some form customization options that are built into QuickBooks Enterprise. We'll take a look at an invoice. The same customization options are available on purchase orders, estimates, and sales order. In QuickBooks Enterprise, we give you the ability to sort by any field on the invoice. So if I wanted to search by description, then I can sort it by that field as it says here, and once you've sorted, that sorting cannot be undone. You can search by any field on the invoice that's the most helpful for very long invoices. We include the ability to customize your forms in QuickBooks. This allows you to customize the look and feel for your form in QuickBooks. And in QuickBooks Enterprise, we give you the ability to include cost on the screen of your forms. And with advanced pricing, you can include the base price of items on your forms. We give the options to show only the total on the last page for longer invoices. 
and you can print page numbers on forms that are longer than two pages. When printing your invoices in other forms, you can shade lines between items to make them easier to see. To fill out forms, we include the Find and Select feature in QuickBooks Enterprise. This makes it easier to search items using any field, and then you can easily add those fields right into your form. The search capability allows you to start typing an item and then QuickBooks will find that item for you. Next, we'll talk about more items that will allow you to track more detail about your inventory. Let's start with the Inventory Center. The Inventory Center is where you'll see all of your items in QuickBooks. In the Inventory Center, you can easily see your markup and margin for items. You can also include an image of the item. Next, in Inventory, we've improved a preference that allows you to disallow negative quantities in inventory. When you choose this preference, you cannot sell inventory into the negative. Next is the automatic price markup feature. This is a feature where when you're entering a bill for new items and your cost on that item increases, QuickBooks will ask you if you want to update the item record with the new cost. If you answer yes to that, it will suggest your sales price based upon your existing markup and margin. Now let's go back to the home screen. Next, we'll talk about some manufacturing features that are improved in QuickBooks Enterprise when building an assembly. QuickBooks Enterprise will allow you to change your components on the fly. So if you are out of a particular item, you can make your substitution right there on the build screen. You can also change your quantity needed. This will help you account for waste. QuickBooks Enterprise allows you to customize this build screen much like you can customize other forms in QuickBooks, like your invoice, estimate, and purchase order will allow you to print this built screen if you need to build it for some shop floor traveler. If your assembly includes other assemblies, QuickBooks will allow you to automatically build those required subassemblies all in one step. You can also print a shortage report if you attempt to build more assemblies than the raw material you have on hand will allow you to print a shortage report. The shortage report will show you all of the items that are short and then allow you to automatically create purchase orders from that assembly. Now let's go ahead and go back to the home screen you will have the ability to create automatic purchase orders. You will find this on inventory reports, like an inventory stock status by item report. From this report, any item that is flagged to reorder, when you click the Create Auto PO button, it will put those items on your report. It will also create one purchase order per vendor. The last thing we'll talk about in inventory is the advanced inventory feature. Advanced inventory is included in the Platinum subscription. Advanced inventory includes seven things. It includes the ability to track inventory and multiple inventory locations. It also includes the ability to track inventory in different bin locations inside of your warehouses. It gives you the ability to track either serial numbers or lot numbers within QuickBooks. It will give you the ability to use FIFO costing versus the standard average cost that is included in QuickBooks. It will give you the ability to use barcode scanning to place items on forms and to receive items into your warehouse. You can enable worksheets for sales order fulfillment for our pick, pack, and ship feature, and purchase order management to receive items in stock. All this can be done through a computer in the warehouse or a mobile barcode scanner. You can set up 
landed cost accounts to track your products more accurately. You don't see it on this preference form, but alternate vendor is another feature of QuickBooks Enterprise Advanced Inventory. This allows you to compare up to four alternate vendors for one inventory part. I have a separate video for Advanced Inventory that will give you a detailed demonstration. You will see the link at the end of this video. Now let's go back to the home screen. Next, we'll talk about some reporting capabilities that are unique to QuickBooks Enterprise. Let's start with the ability to combine reports for multiple company files. The first thing we'll do is add additional files to this feature. Once we've added those files, we can choose our date range. We can choose our report bases, and we can choose which reports we would like to combine. Then we'll click on the Combine Reports and Excel button. This shows our combined report. What you're looking at here is a balance sheet standard. All of your accounts are listed on the left-hand side. Each company file has its own column. The total shows in the last column where accounts match for both name and number. You'll have accounts included on that same line. So again, this is our balance sheet standard. Here's our balance sheet summary. There's a profit and loss standard. There's a statement of cash flows. There's a trial balance, and you can also run a sales by customer summary and a profit and loss by class. Let's go to the home screen. Next in reporting is an ODBC that we include in QuickBooks Enterprise. ODBC stands for Open Database Connectivity. It was a standard that was developed by Microsoft. It will allow you to run custom reports using outside applications like Microsoft Access, Excel, or even Crystal Reports to build custom reports using your QuickBooks data. The ODBC interface is included when you purchase QuickBooks Enterprise. We also include the Intuit Statement Writer. The Statement Writer allows you to start with balance sheet reports, income statements, cash flow statements, budget reports, retain earning statements. You can also create cover letters, audit reports, and compilation reports. With the Statement Writer, you can customize reports one time and then use them again and again. You can also export them from one company file and use them in another company file. There are also two job costing reports that are unique to QuickBooks Enterprise. The first report is a WIP summary report. This report takes a look at your estimated cost, shows you how complete you are with that job, and then allows you to compare your earned revenue to your actual revenue to make sure that you're invoicing enough for your job. There is also a committed cost by job report. The committed cost by job report contains two unique things that aren't found in any other costing report. The first is the committed cost column. This includes items that are included on purchase orders or item receipts that aren't already a part of job costing. It also includes an unpaid wages column. Time in QuickBooks is not a cost until you pay that employee. This includes time that is not yet included on a paycheck. Once you pay that employee, that will move over into the actual cost column. The last thing we'll talk about in reporting is our advanced reporting feature. Advanced reporting puts the information you need at your fingertips. It helps you find the right report fast with templates bundled for manufacturing, wholesale contractors, and retail. 
You can save time with the templates that are auto-filled with your company data. You can find the reporting answers when you need them with the Robust Help Portal. Advanced reporting is our most powerful reporting tool and has never been easier. Now we'll go back to our home screen. Next, we'll talk about some features that will allow you to access QuickBooks Enterprise the way that you want. As I mentioned before, QuickBooks Enterprise will allow you to scale from 1 to 30 simultaneous users. It will allow you to work in two company files at the same time. To access this feature, we will go to the file at the top of the screen. I will go to Open Second Company. This will allow you to choose the second company file you wish to open. And now you're in your second company file. Both company files will show up on your taskbar and you can easily toggle between each company file. Your main company file will say primary at the top of the screen and your second company file will say secondary. A lot of my clients even change the color scheme so that they can easily see the difference between each company file. QuickBooks Enterprise with hosting is an additional feature for you to have with QuickBooks Desktop Enterprise. The hosting offers protected anytime, anywhere, and on any device access to your data with hosting no matter where you are or if you're using a Mac, PC, or tablet, you can access your data. You get a reduced price for bundling QuickBooks Enterprise with hosting. Let me know if you want more information on pricing added to your quote for QuickBooks Enterprise hosting service. We also include a QuickBooks chat feature. This allows you to chat with coworkers that are logged onto the company file. It also allows the administrator to close users out of the company file. This should make it easy for users who had to complete an activity that required single user access. Next, we'll talk about the expanded user control and security features that are built in QuickBooks Enterprise. We'll start with the user permissions, but first I'm going to show you the user permissions that are built in Pro and Premier software. User permissions in our Pro and Premier software are divided into eight broad categories. If you give someone access to one of these categories in our Pro and Premier software, that user would be able to do absolutely everything in that particular category. If you're going to give someone access to sales and receivables, they would be able to see your sales invoices, sales receipts, they could do estimates, they would be able to perform progress billing, they can receive deposits and customer payments, they will be able to enter returns. All of those things are included in this one category in Pro and Premier. In QuickBooks Enterprise, we get very specific with user permissions. First, we include a role list. There are 15 predefined roles. There's even a view only role. So if you wanted to give somebody the ability to look at everything but change nothing, the view only role would accomplish that. We allow you to delete roles you can duplicate them, you can modify them, and you can create brand new roles from scratch. This is where you'll find the 115 different permission choices that are available within QuickBooks Enterprise. Let's take a look at the customer's receivables role, which is similar to the sales and receivables role that we looked at with Pro and Premier you can see that you can get very specific with user permissions. If you want to give someone the ability to create a sales order but not create invoices, you can do that in QuickBooks Enterprise inside the permission. You can give the ability to, to view and create but not modify or delete. You can get very specific with permissions in QuickBooks Enterprise. 
We also give you an easy way to view user permissions. You can do this by user or by role. In a really easy to read report form, you can go through and audit your user permissions to make sure that you haven't given someone more access to the program than what you want them to have. QuickBooks allows you to lock down portions of your data by entering a closing date. You can go in and choose any date of your choice. Enter a closing date password and then no user unless you provide them with a the password would be able to make any change that falls on or before the date of your choice. You will be able to see any changes that are made before that closing date by viewing the closing date exception report. There's also an always on audit trail and there's an audit trail report. This audit trail report is going to show you every transaction that was entered, modified, and deleted. Who did it and when they did it. Again, the audit trail is always turned on and cannot be turned off. The last thing we'll talk about is some things that come with your purchase of QuickBooks Enterprise subscription. In addition to US-based technical support and the latest edition of QuickBooks, we also include an online backup service. With the online backup service, you can set automatic daily backups you have with 100 gigabytes of backup space and your data is secure with bank level security that integrates seamlessly with QuickBooks Enterprise. And after you purchase, it's easy to activate your data protect. For those of you who need to do EDI, Intuit has partnered with TrueCommerce. EDI can automate your sales and purchase order processing. It can improve your productivity, reduce your errors, and streamline your order to cash cycle major retailers. Manufacturing and wholesalers almost universally mandate their suppliers to use EDI. Intuit has partnered with TrueCommerce. This includes the TrueCommerce EDI software along with one trading partner at no charge with your QuickBooks Enterprise subscription. For more information about EDI, contact me and I will introduce you to a TrueCommerce representative. For those of you who are in the field service industry, we have Intuit Field Service Management. Intuit Field Service Management gives you real-time updates from the field, efficient job scheduling, and on-the-spot invoicing with Field Service Management you can send wireless work orders to your field service technicians and they can then accept payment in the field and send invoices right back to QuickBooks Enterprise. With the purchase of Enterprise Solutions, you will get one free user of Intuit Field Service Management. This is included in your QuickBooks Enterprise subscription price. In this video, we will look at how QuickBooks Enterprise Advanced Inventory works with multiple inventory locations, serial and lot numbers, FIFO, barcodes, site operations, and landed cost. First, we'll make sure that the multi-location inventory feature is turned on. We'll choose Edit, Preferences, Items in Inventory, Company Preferences, click on the Advanced Inventory Settings button, and we'll make sure that the multi, Multiple Inventory Sites feature is enabled. We'll also check the Row and Shelf and Bin option. Click OK. One of the first things you'll want to do is define your inventory locations. Click on Inventory Assemblies. This is where you can define up to 1 million inventory locations, sites, and bin locations. To create a new inventory site, we'll choose New. We'll give the site a name. We can give it a description. 
If we have a site contact, we can fill in that information and we can fill in the address details. If we're defining a location within that site, we'll check this box and we'll choose the inventory location and then give the site a name. Go ahead then and click OK. Now you can also set inventory reorder points by location. To do that, go to the items list. We will double click on an inventory part. Then we'll choose the inventory site info button for that particular inventory part. This is where I can define the reorder point for this particular inventory part. And with multi-location inventory, we can purchase inventory for a particular inventory item. I can then receive that inventory It automatically fills in that inventory information and at this time I can either assign it to an unassigned location or add a new location where I'd like to receive that inventory. I can then sell my inventory and choose the site that I want to sell that inventory from. Notice it already chose my default location. And I can easily see where that particular inventory part may be available. I mentioned earlier that you can transfer your inventory between inventory locations. This would allow me to choose the location that I want to transfer from. I can choose the location that I want to transfer to. Then choose the items that I would like to transfer to that particular location. Then we can go ahead and save and exit. So with the multi-location feature, you also get multi-location reports. So you'll be able to see sales by inventory site next you'll see items by bin location You'll see a quantity on hand by inventory site. You'll see an inventory by valuation summary by inventory site. You can see an inventory stock status by site report. And if you're doing manufacturing in QuickBooks, you can do a pending builds by site. Let's take a look at the serial number feature within QuickBooks Enterprise. For serial numbers, again, we want to make sure the feature is turned on. So we'll go back to Edit, Preferences, Items in Inventory, Company Preferences, and then the Advanced Inventory Settings. Go to the Serial Lot Numbers. We'll make sure we have enabled the lot or serial numbers. Then we'll choose a serial number feature. This will allow you to choose which forms you want serial numbers to be active on and this will allow you to tell the system if you want to be warned when a serial number is blank 
if a serial number is a duplicate or if a serial number does not exist in inventory. Go ahead and click OK. Once a feature is turned on, you will receive serial number items from a vendor. We can go ahead and add the serial numbers at that time. Now this feature will allow you to get serial numbers in a number of ways. If you have serial numbers in a barcode, you can barcode in the number, or if you have them in Excel, as I do here, you can simply copy and paste the items directly into this field. I can also type them into this field, separating them by a comma. Let's go ahead and go back to the home page. I can then sell a serial item number to a customer. We'll go ahead and choose create an invoice. Then we will choose a customer. Then we will choose an item code. Then we'll choose the inventory location and choose a serial number that I'm selling to this particular customer. If I were selling more than one, I could select the number of serial numbers that I'm selling. Now, if that customer would have returned that inventory item for warranty purposes, I could easily find it in the system by looking for the serial number. Let's go into Edit, Find Serial Number. Here I can look for all or part of the serial number, or I can find the customer and the invoice where I sold that particular item. And I can also see who I purchased that item from. Now I could also run a report by transaction list by serial number. And again, this would not only allow me to see that particular item, that particular serial number to and where it was purchased from. If I use that number and assembled item, it would show that there too. Now we'll go ahead and go back to the home screen. You can transfer serial number items from one location to another. We'll go ahead and choose the sites that we want to transfer. Then we'll choose an item. We'll choose the quantity to transfer. And then we will choose the number of the serial numbers you wish to transfer. To add serial numbers to the items you already have in stock, you'll do an inventory adjustment and change the adjustment type to serial number. You'll choose your inventory location, you'll choose your item, and this will allow you to add serial numbers to items you already have in stock. Now we'll go ahead and click OK and we'll go back to the home screen. Other reports that include serial numbers, you can run a serial numbers in stock report. and you can run a serial numbers in stock by site report. Now let's take a look at the lot number feature within QuickBooks Enterprise. First we're going to make sure that the lot number feature is enabled. Again we can choose the forms we want to enable the lot number tracking and warn you if a lot number is blank 
or if the lot number doesn't exist in inventory. We'll go ahead and click OK and again. When you purchase inventory from your vendor, you need to go ahead and enter your vendor, enter your item, the quantity, and the site. You'll enter the lot number that's assigned that item. If you receive more than one lot, then you'll enter multiple lines. And we'll go ahead and save and close. When you sell that item to a customer, click on the Create Invoice, enter the item, the site location, and the lot number of your item that you wish to sell. And now we'll go back to the home screen. For recall purposes, if I needed to recall that item with that particular lot number, I could run a transaction list by lot number report. You would enter the item then choose the lot number. This report will show me who I sold it to, who I purchased it from, and again if I used it in an assembly. I would see that information here as well. I will go ahead and go back to the home screen. Now to add lot numbers to items that you already have in stock, again we'll do an inventory adjustment. Go to Inventory Activities, Adjust Quantity Value on Hand, then I'll choose the type of adjustment, which will be a lot number. We'll choose the item. We'll choose the inventory site. Then this will allow me to add a lot number to the quantity. And then we'll go ahead and we'll save it. Again with lot numbers, we can transfer we can transfer lot number between sites. Go to inventory activities, transfer inventory, choose the site to transfer from, then choose the site to transfer to, choose the item number, then the quantity to transfer, then that will allow me to move 50 of this particular lot from the distribution center to the Atlanta warehouse. And we'll go ahead and save this also. The additional reports that are included with lot number tracking include the transaction list by lot number, lot numbers in stock report, and the lot numbers in stock by site report. Now let's take a look at barcode capability right within QuickBooks Enterprise. First, we're going to make sure barcode capability is enabled. Then make sure barcode scanning is enabled. You can also import barcodes using the barcode wizard. If you have barcodes located in another field within QuickBooks, you can tell QuickBooks where that field is and it will automatically copy the barcodes into the correct field. Or if you don't currently have barcodes in QuickBooks, QuickBooks can generate those fields for you. Okay, now let's go ahead and go to the home screen. You can also add the Add Edit Multiple List Entry feature to import barcodes directly into QuickBooks. Go to List, Add Edit Multiple List Entries, choose Inventory Parts, then you can copy and paste barcodes if you have them in Excel, or you can scan them directly into this view. Once your barcodes are entered, you can use the barcode capability to purchase from your vendor. We'll go into a purchase order. 
and we'll enter in the vendor name and we'll enter in an item and if I choose the same item multiple times QuickBooks will increase the quantity and if I choose a new item QuickBooks will add that item to the next line You can also sell your inventory. We'll choose a customer job and select your items that you wish to sell using the barcode scanner. As we scan the item multiple times, it will increase the quantity. And if we scan the next item, it will add it, the item to the next line. I don't have an example of a serial number on a barcode, but you can also scan the serial number using the barcode scanner. Now, in QuickBooks Enterprise, you can also transfer inventory using a barcode scanner. Go to Inventory Activities, Transfer Inventory, and go ahead and fill out your form. Then you can go ahead and scan your barcode and or serial number to transfer your items. It's as easy as that. As I mentioned, you can print inventory reports with barcodes. Here's an example of an inventory price list that I customized to include the barcode image. All right, now we'll go ahead and go back to the home screen. We'll take a look at FIFO inventory in QuickBooks Enterprise. We can go ahead and click on the FIFO tab and check to use FIFO. And then choose the date in which to start calculating FIFO. FIFO isn't really a feature I can show you what I would encourage you to do is to read the help index which explains FIFO inventory. Turning on FIFO will affect the following reports. Inventory valuation, balance sheet reports, and profit and loss reports. Based on the date you chose to start calculating FIFO. First, we will start with the Site Operations section. The Site operation tab includes several options. The Site operation tab allows you to turn on the Sales Order Fulfillment Worksheet and the Purchase Order Management Worksheet. You can also add a supported mobile scanner or Android phone for warehouse usage. These worksheets provide a single location to view the status of all applicable orders. Let's enable the Sales Order Fulfillment Worksheet so I can show you how it works. On the Dashboard tab of the Sales Order Fulfillment screen, it will show you the tabs up top, which will show you all the sales orders. You can also sort by Open Sales Orders. You can see the Pick Sales Orders the pack sales orders, and any ship sales orders. We'll go back to the all sales orders. In the next section, you can search by your customer name or your sales order. So if I just type in here Sheboygan, it will bring up everything with Sheboygan. Or if I want to search for a specific sales order, it will show every sales order that relates to those numbers. You can also search by sites. You can also search by fulfillable status and you can also search by a specific time frame. And the information in the columns shows the sales order number, the date of the sales order, the customer name, the shipping address, the number of items that are in the sales order, and then the status of the sales order the ship details, and then the site, the warehouse location, and whether the sales order is fulfillable, 
if it's not fulfillable, then you're not able to move forward with picking or packing the items. And then action is the last one. If you want to choose multiple sales orders, you can choose it for batching. Your options for that is to send for picking, send for packing, send for express pick and pack, or mark as shipped. Okay, let's show an example of a sales order right now. Let's pick this one here for, um, we'll just pick this one, 0129. We'll choose our action, which is the send for express pick pack. So here we have the item check marked. Shows there are five to be fulfilled. And it shows here that there are 35 available. I'm going to click in this blue box. It will bring up the item. It will show all the different inventory sites and the quantity on hand at each site. Then you will see on to the right hand side it will show all sites and then it shows Sheboygan because that's the site that's chosen for this sales order. It'll show the quantity on sales orders. It'll show the quantity reserved for assemblies if there are any. And then you can also see details, so any sales orders that are out there, any pending bills or any purchase orders. You can also choose to show the details for the selected site only. We'll click close. So as you can see this is fulfillable and I'll click next. And here is where we would add any notes. So talk to Steve before packing. And then you can assign your packer, which we will assign RAN. Then you have your choice to either send to device or you can just print your express pick pack list manually if you don't have a device. I'm going to be using my Android device just to show you how it works on your mobile barcode scanner. So I'm going to click send to a device. Then it tells you that your sales order has been sent to your Express Pick Pack to your device. Click OK. Okay, so now that you look at the sales order, you will see that it was sent for Pick Pack. I've connected my Android phone to demonstrate the Pick and Pack process. From the QuickBooks desktop app, choose warehouse. Here I can start the process to perform cycle counts, pick, pack, or express pick pack for sales orders or receive purchase orders. Any items assigned to me are shown in each category along with unassigned orders. I am going to choose the express pick pack option. This screen shows the number of sales orders directly assigned to me. Each order will display the customer's name, shipping address, sales order number, any notes, along with the total numbers of items to pick. You can choose the unassigned tab to assign any unassigned sales orders to yourself. I will tap on the first sales order. A message will come up to assign this pick and pack to yourself. I will choose yes. This order is now showing under my assign tab. To start the pick pack process, I can choose the first sales order on my screen or search by customer name and or by site. I will tap on the first order on my list. The customer name appears on the top of the screen. The item number with a short description bin location, and quantity to pick shows in each item box. I can sort my items by bin, item, or status, and click to choose ascending or descending. If I have a barcode scanner such as a Zebra TC25, 
I can start by scanning. Since I only have one item, I will choose that one. This screen shows the quantity assigned, item number, item description, barcode number, and VIN location. Enter the quantity picked by using the plus or minus buttons or by simply entering the number in the box. I will enter 5 and then click pick. You will repeat this step for each item in the pick list. Once that is complete, choose proceed to pack. A pop-up box will ask to confirm that you want to proceed because the picked quantity cannot be modified later. Choose yes to confirm. This screen will show the shipping address and a summary of all your items from the pick list. Choose which items to pack. Next choose add to package if weight, dimensions, or notes need to be added. I will enter 5 pounds and the dimensions of 24 by 24 by 12. Enter any notes pertaining to your order. I will enter expedite shipping. Keep in mind you can have multiple packages for one order or you may not even use the add to package feature if you don't ship your products. Once that is complete, click OK. Click Done once finished with packing. A dialog box will pop up asking you to confirm that your pick and pack is complete. I'll click Yes and you can see that the information is syncing back to QuickBooks Enterprise software with confirmation that your task was completed. Choose Go to Task to continue with the rest of your orders. Let's take a look at the Sales Order Fulfillment screen in QuickBooks Enterprise. The orange flag shown on any of the top tabs means that there is new information to update. I will click the Express Pick Pack tab to update my sales order. Choose a line item to update the sales order. You have two options in the Status section to either view the Pick Pack list or print the packing slip. I will view the pick pack list first. On the top left hand corner, you can search by item number or by packing status. On the top right, you can see any notes sent from your warehouse worker. You can also refresh your screen if needed. Your item number, description, sales order number, customer name, bin location, to pack and packed quantity, pack status, and if there were any issues with the sync are shown in the details section. The only field that can be edited is the packed quantity field. In the bottom left you will see the number of packages and can choose to edit or remove the information. If you choose to edit, a dialog box will appear allowing you to delete a package or add a new package. Once you are finished with your choices, select OK. I will choose Update Sales Order to show the changes in QuickBooks. You will get a message stating that the next step is to ship. To print your packing slip, choose Print Packing Slip. Here's a preview of what it looks like. You are able to customize the template so it looks much better than what I'm showing you. The next step is to create your shipping label or to mark the order as shipped. 
On the dashboard screen, you will choose your sales order to print the shipping label. Your options are shipping through FedEx, UPS, or USPS through the Shipping Manager. The sales order will be updated with the shipping and tracking information. If you use another software for shipping, you can choose a sales order and mark them as shipped. To invoice your client, click into the sales order number and create the invoice. You are also able to print the packing slip from the invoice. Now let's talk about our purchase order management worksheet and what it can do for you. Let's go back to turn on the preference to enable purchase order management. Go to Edit, Preferences, Items and Inventory, Company Preferences, choose Advanced Inventory Settings. Under the Site Operations tab, make sure Enable Purchase Order Management is checked. Click OK. Then click OK again to save any changes. To use the Purchase Order Management Worksheet, go to the Vendor tab or Inventory tab at the top of the toolbar. Choose Purchase Order Management Worksheet. The Purchase Order Management Worksheet has two tabs. The Purchase Order tab lets you manage purchase orders and the PO Progress tab lets you change and track the status of purchase orders. The Purchase Order tab dashboard shows your PO number, vendor name, number of items to receive, shipment carrier, the warehouse site which you can choose, receive status, any open amount, the date of the purchase order, your sales order associated to your purchase order, and any notes are shown in the activity section. You can search for a particular purchase order by PO number, item name number, or sales order number in the memo field. You can also view your purchase orders by site, status, or vendor. I'm going to sort by open status to show only the open purchase orders. To send a purchase order for receiving, select the checkbox of the PO you want to receive. You can choose multiple POs to receive, assign a receiving site if multiple inventory sites are enabled, select the Send to Device drop-down menu, then choose to Send to Device which sends the information to the app or mobile barcode scanner. Or you can print to receive, which will print the worksheet for manual receiving. You can also assign a receiving employee and add a note if needed, then send or print. Now I will demonstrate how to receive the items on my Android phone. My app is shown on the screen. To receive your items from a PO, click Receive. You can search by PO number or vendor name. Choose this site or keep it checked on all sites. Choose your PO. Scan your items to receive in or manually enter the number or check full quantity. This screen shows the quantity expected. Item name and description, 
along with bin location. Select your bin if it's different than the default. Add any notes pertaining to the order. Click Receive when finished. Click Update to send to QuickBooks, then Finish to complete the process. The next step is to click on the PO Progress tab. The Purchase Order Progress tab dashboard shows your purchase order number, vendor name, warehouse site, receiver information, the date it was created, order status, any notes, and next actions. You can sort by each row. For example, if we wanted to sort by status, we can click on the status column tab in ascending or descending order. You can search for a particular purchase order by PO number, item name, number. You can also search your purchase orders by site, status, or vendor. You can choose how you want to proceed from the Actions drop-down menu. Here you can view the Receive list. This will open a form to manually receive items. You can create an items receipt which will automatically create an item receipt for the selected purchase order. The third option is to create a bill, which will automatically create a bill for the selected purchase order. You can choose either to create bill or create item receipt from a received purchase order. Here's what it looks like when you create a bill with a received status. Let's go back to the home page. As we have demonstrated, QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum Edition allows you to use a mobile scanner to efficiently receive items from purchase orders or pick and pack items collected from a warehouse to complete sales orders. To use the mobile barcode scanner on a supported mobile scanner device or Android phone, you have to first add the device to the preference list along with the warehouse desktop app. Let's go back to our site operations preference to show where we added our device. Some of the supported mobile barcode scanner devices are Zebra TC20, 25, and 51. I've already added my Android phone along with installing the Desktop Warehouse Manager app found in the Play Store. After installed, your device works with the Warehouse Manager app to perform cycle counts, receive purchase orders, and pick and pack sales orders either manually or with a scanner. The device will send updated purchase orders and sales orders back to QuickBooks Enterprise. You'll also need to set up each warehouse worker assigned to fill or receive orders as a picker. This is done by setting up the worker in the vendor section. The names of all pickers added in QuickBooks will appear on the scanner. The first step to set up landed cost is to turn on Advanced Inventory located in QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum Edition. From the Edit menu, select Preferences, select Items and in Inventory, then select Company Preferences. Select the Advanced Inventory Settings, select the Landed Cost tab, then select the Setup Landed Cost account. 
You can create a new account or use an existing account if you've already used a workaround in the past. I'm going to set up a new account called Landed Cost to Allocate. I have the option to choose the chart of account type as other current assets or cost of goods sold. I would recommend using other current assets because the costs remain on the balance sheet side until you're ready to allocate the landed cost to your product. For the description, I'll enter assigned vendor bills for freight, custom duties, and other charges. Keep in mind that the landed cost to allocate is used as a clearing account that when everything is completed should show a zero balance. Click Save and Continue. In order to map shipping and handling items, you must have other charge accounts already set up in items. To see what we currently have, choose Add Item, then click the down arrow and you can see the only account available is Finance Charge. That's not going to work for us. We need to add Shipping and Handling, Custom Duty, and Insurance Account, and other charges. In order to create these new accounts to map, click Add Later. Then click OK, OK again, and then a third time to exit the Preference screen. Before we create a new account, I'm going to go to the chart of accounts so that you can see the new account landed cost to allocate. It's listed as an other current asset with a zero balance. Again, this was created to be used as a clearing account. Now let's exit out of the chart of accounts and go to our home screen. To create new items for landed cost, you'll need to create the new items listing the other charge account type. Let's select the item list, select item, then select new, choose other charge for the account type, and then we will create a new account called shipping and handling. We will also click on this item is used in assemblies or is a reimbursable charge to access the purchase description and expense fields. So in those fields, I will type in shipping and handling. And then we will also put in our expense account, which will be the landed cost to allocate. And then in order for the item to save, we have to add a sales account. So I'm just going to add a miscellaneous sales account. Then I'll click OK. And then once I save that, I will create another new account. And I will choose the other charge for the type. I will create the new account called Custom Duty. And I will click on the This Item is Used in Assemblies. And then I will add Custom Duty in the Purchase and Sales description. And then for the Expense Account, I will put in Landed Cost to Allocate again. And I will add the Miscellaneous Sales. And then we'll click OK, and then we've got one more to add. And for that one, we will choose the other charge for type. And then we will create a new account called Insurance. And then click on, you know the drill, this item is used in assemblies. And then in the purchase description, in sales description, we'll just put Insurance on Shipment. And then for the expense account, you guessed it, the landed cost to allocate, and then the miscellaneous sales for our sales account. And then we'll click OK. And we are all set with adding our new items. 
Now we need to go back and map our shipping and handling items to the landed cost account. From the Edit menu, select Preferences, select Items and Inventory, then select Company Preferences, then select Advanced Inventory Settings, select the Landed Cost tab, once you select that, it shows that the three expense items mapped automatically. Let's select the Manage Landed Cost Account to take a closer look. Select Save and Continue to go to the next screen. As you see here, the insurance, custom duty, and shipping and handling items we created were automatically mapped with other charge as the type and landed costs to allocate as the current account and target account. If all your landed costs are added, select Save and Close or Add Later to exit the screen. Then click OK once, OK twice, and OK three times to exit the preference screen. <laughs> now that we've mapped the shipping and handling items, you can calculate your landed cost for any bill you add inventory and shipping items too. So let's get started. Bills are entered for freight, duties, import fees, and other product costs using the other charge items on the items tab of expense transactions. In this example, we will enter a bill for custom duty paid on a shipment. Let's go to the enter bills, as you can see the icon here. And then when we go to fill out the bill, for the vendor, we're going to create a new vendor called Duties R Us. We will add the new vendor. Next, you have to enter the date of the invoice. And since this is a sample file, uh, it has the year 2025. So we'll just stick with that. We'll go with December 15th of 2025. And for the reference number, we'll just put 123 because I'm super creative like that. And then for the amount due, we'll put $1,000. And then next, we go to the items section and we will use the items tab and select the other charge type items assigned in the landed cost setup. I will use custom duty as the item and enter 1,000 as the cost, plus if you have a customer job or class or anything else that you need to add for that row. Once you're done with that, click Save. Then let's take a look at the transaction. So if you click Control y to see the journal transaction, the accounting result is to increase debit the other current asset or cost of goods sold account which is the landed cost to allocate, balance created during the setup, and increases, which is credits, the accounts payable accounts balance for the freight, duties, and other related costs. The 1000 in custom duty needs to be allocated to Paulson's lighting. Go into Enter Bills, click on the Find button, Look up Paulson's Lighting. Choose the bill dated December 15th of 2025. We have three items that need to have the custom duty allocated to the cost. Select the Calculate Landed Cost button on the top right. The Calculate Landed Cost window will provide options for allocating cost. Under the Shipping and Handling Costs, select Add Bills. You can sort your vendor names, allocation status, and by date. I will choose the custom date of December 15th of 2025. Our Duties Are Us bill shows with an unallocated status. That is the bill we want to allocate, so check mark and choose Add Bills to Accept. Choose the amount you want to allocate. For example, if the total amount is for two separate vendor bills and you need to divide that amount in half, 
you would choose $500 to allocate. You can view details for more information regarding the bill. Now you need to choose how you want to allocate your bill. <laughs> okay, there's a lot in this section to go over. So um, let's first toggle over the select button to see your options to divide your cost. The quantity will take the individual quantity of each item and divide it by the total quantity to get to your percentage amount. In this example, the total quantity of 10 plus 15 plus 20 is 45. To get the percentage to allocate, QuickBooks will divide 10, which is the first quantity in the first row, divided by 45. That comes out to 22.22% .22 as your percentage. They do the same thing with your second row of 15 and divide that by 45, which comes out to 33.33%. And then on the last row, they have 20. They take 20 divided by 45 to get 44.44%. .44%. To get your duty cost per item, it will take that total amount to allocate, which is a $500, and times it by the percentage of each item for the total. The shipping and handling cost on the last column shows a total amount to be allocated, and that has to equal $500. You can also exclude an item from the allocation by unchecking the item. As you can see, QuickBooks will automatically adjust the amounts to be allocated. Easy peasy, right? If you choose percentage, the items are split in an equal amount. So say you have three items, which we do, the percentage amount will be 33.33, 33.33, and then 33.34. You can choose a unique amount to allocate per line as long as in the end it equals 100%. The amount is calculated by totaling the cost of each row, then dividing each one by the total cost. In this example, QuickBooks takes the totals of 400, 450, plus 960, for a total of 1810 QuickBooks then takes the $400 cost and divides it by the $1,810. So for the first row, it will be 22.10 for your percentage to allocate. You will do the same for the other rows. And the last option you have is to choose the shipping handling cost. Now this is manual. You can enter the cost of each item until it totals the $500. Again, keep in mind you can either include or exclude items from a specific vendor bill for allocating the cost. Let's select the quantity for this example. In the first row of item number P3261, dash zero six, you'll see the quantity is 10 with a cost of $40. So that is the average cost. So your total amount is $400. When you add in the shipping and handling cost or the custom duty fee, your landed cost ends up being $51.11 each with a total cost of $511.11. Now I will click Post to Bill. Once you post your bill, you will see that the landed cost updated successfully. The screen shows the items which list the original cost, any markup account, original sales price, and landed cost. You can enter the new selling price for each item, then choose Update and proceed to manually record the item with the new selling price. Otherwise, choose Skip and Proceed 
to keep pricing the same as before the landed cost was added. Let's look at the transaction before we save. Click Control Y. The inventory asset account is increased debited with the original cost and accounts payable credited with the total of $1,810. Now let's click Save to record the transaction. Let's review the results now that it's saved. Enterprise maintains the original vendor bill amount by decreasing crediting the other current asset account assigned in the landed cost preference. This setup for the amount of the allocated landed cost. So now the items total $2,310. The expenses, which consist of landed cost to be allocated, total $500. Let's look behind the scenes. Click Control Y. The inventory asset account will be increased or debited with $511.11, $616.67, and $1,182.22. The account's payable amount of $1,810 will remain the same. The landed cost account will increase or credit with the amount of the difference, which is the $500. All this will take place while not affecting the original amount being paid to the supplying vendor. Whew, right? Okay, now we can go behind the scenes and take a little more of a look at everything. So hopefully, uh, I know this is overwhelming, but we'll get there. Let's exit out of our bill to go to our inventory item list. Search for the item P. 3261-06. Taking a look at the item, we see that the sales price stayed the same at $95. The cost shows $40 with the landed cost at $51.111. The average cost went from $40 to now $41.91. Cents and some change with 58 on hand, which totals $2,431.11. Keep in mind that the landed cost is only calculated on the 10 items from the Paulson's lighting bill. Now let's exit out of here and let's take a look at our inventory valuation detail on that same part number. Let's go into Reports, Inventory, Inventory Valuation Detail, and then I will customize the report to show the part number. If we do the calculations, we will have 48 parts or quantity at $40 which totals 1920 and then once we have the landed cost in with the other bill, it shows $51.11 times 10, with a total of $511.11. So this equals the total $2,431.11. So there you go, those two total. Now I have some things for you to keep in mind. We'll exit out of here and we will go back to the bill Paulson's Lighting. So we'll go into the Enter Bills and we will find the bill. It was dated December 15th. So now that we're in the bill, you can remove the landed cost by choosing Remove Landed Cost. It takes it right out of there. So all that work we did today is gone but I'm not going to do that. But just to let you know that it's possible. Another thing to keep in mind is that the financials are affected by the date of the bill. Let's say you change the date of this bill to an earlier date. Your financials will have a lower inventory balance from your balance sheet 
and show a higher cost of goods sold in your profit and loss. Let's exit and go to our chart of accounts. The landed cost to allocate shows the increase in $1,000 with the $500 allocated as a debit. Since we use the same date, the decrease is showing first. But if you look at the total left in the account to allocate, that shows that you still have $500 left. Do you have or want a bill approval process to use with QuickBooks for your organization? New in QuickBooks Enterprise 2022, which is available now, offers a bill approval system so that your bills can get approved based on your specific criteria you set. In this tutorial, learn how to set up rules for QuickBooks to check which bills need approval for entry and payment. Users are then prompted to send bills for approval. First, we need to set up and define the approval process. Go to Company Menu and select Set Up Approval Processes. You'll need to sign into your Intuit account if you've not already done so. This takes you to a screen showing the benefits of bill approval and the diagram of the process. Select Get Started, then Set Up in the Bill Template card. Again, you may need to sign into your Intuit account. Only users who are admin and or master admin in the Intuit account can create an approval process. You are now looking at the bill approval process creation screen. Keep in mind that you can set up multiple approval processes for a specific type of transaction, but you can only activate one rule at a time. I will show you what I mean by this after we've created our first bill approval. One other thing before we start the approval process setup I notice that the approver must be set up in QuickBooks with either the role of admin, which isn't going to work for most of us, or to give the user an accounts payable role. I'll take you there so you can see how I set up Barry with the user role. That was the only way I could get more than admin to show in the action window. To start, Enter the name and description for the process. I will enter bill amount greater than 3000. Next, enter the conditions for your bill. When you want to trigger the approval process, you have three types of conditions to define. Bill amount, vendor name, and vendor type. I will choose amount greater than and type in 3000. I can also choose the vendor name or names to include or exclude. I can also add conditions based on my vendor type which is set up from the vendor center as shown here. Next under actions choose a user who will approve the bill. Choose the user to send an email notification to. You can change the reminder email to the number of days before the approval will get an email notification. Here you can customize the email subject and message. Also add the email address to send the no notifications to someone other than the approver. Select Save to Activate Later or Save and Activate. And the approval process will activate for any newly created bills. Click OK. To reiterate, this rule will only take effect on newly created bills. Existing bills still follow any previous process if any had been activated. You can edit 
deactivate or delete a template from the Approval Processes tab. You cannot delete a created process if you have bills which need to be approved. You're asked to delete the bills first. Afterward, you can delete the process. If you deactivate the created bill process, newly created bills won't require approval. Existing bills still need to be approved. If I try to set up another new approval process and activate, I will get an error message to deactivate my current approval before the new one can be activated. Now let's enter a bill and save. Since our bill is over $3,000, QuickBooks identifies this bill for approval requirement. If you are not signed into an Intuit account, you will be asked to log in. I tried this bill pay quite a few times and I wasn't getting the bill appro approval screen. And I realized that bills created by the admin will not flow through the approval process. So basically you want to be signed in as someone other than the admin in order to get the bill process approval to work. Select send for approval to send the bill for approval or select save as draft to save the bill in a draft state. If you do this, it won't affect the register while it's in a draft state. I will click send for approval and a pop-up confirms it was sent. Click OK. Next, we need to approve the bill. So the approver selects track and approve transactions from the company menu. You know the drill. If you're not signed into the Intuit account, you'll be asked to do so. You'll see the transactions assigned to you with the following statuses. Pending shows the bills are awaiting your approval. Rejected shows bills you denied. Approved shows all approved bills. All shows every bill regardless of status. Select each pending bill, then select approve to approve the transactions or select reject to deny. Now that we've just watched the bill approval video, we're going to talk about the other new features in QuickBooks Enterprise. The next feature is the enhanced computing power is now at 64 bit. This will accomplish all your accounting tasks faster with the quicker, more reliable QuickBooks. Next is e-commerce for QuickBooks with Webgility. You can track your revenue from different selling platforms like Amazon, eBay, and Shopify and sync directly into QuickBooks. Help simplify e-commerce management and gain a clear picture of your profitability. The next one is to pay vendor bills online. Schedule and pay bills faster within QuickBooks. Use the funding source you want and in the digital or physical form your vendors want. The next feature is to customize and email bill payment stubs. You can maintain professional and consistent communication by emailing customizable bill payment stubs to your vendors. You can attach documents to transactions. You can do this faster by directly uploading them via the QuickBooks Desktop mobile app. Add multiple customer contacts to your batch emails. You can send emails more quickly by choosing the right recipients from a list of customer or vendor contacts. Reduce miscommunication resulting from manual entry of email addresses. The next one is an instant deposit for payment users. Get your money instantly when customers pay you, even late nights, weekends, and holidays. Quickly and easily collect payments for items that you do not require an invoice by sending a payment link. In this video, I'm going to talk about a new feature in QuickBooks Desktop that many of my clients have been asking for. It's called Vendor Bill Pay powered by Melio. Vendor Bill Pay gives businesses the flexibility to pay their vendor bills online directly from QuickBooks Desktop Pro Plus, Premier Plus, and all editions of Enterprise 2022. 
This new feature allows users to schedule vendor payments using their debit card, credit card, or EFT from their bank, sending the payment to their vendors. Users can choose whether their vendor will receive the payment as a deposit into their bank account or send a check. It's similar to paying from your online banking account, but paying it from QuickBooks saves you the time of double entry. This is another example how Intuit QuickBooks keeps automating your software toward a more seamless process. Let's get started to demonstrate how Bill Pay works. Keep in mind you must be logged in as the company administrator and sign up with an Intuit account. In our first example, we will enter a bill and pay through our checking account. Select Enter Bills from either your home page or from vendors at the top of the toolbar. Enter the new bill. Bill Pay is a business to business payment solution. Therefore, you can't process payments to non business individuals or payments made for personal reasons. But if your vendor is a registered sole proprietor, we'll be able to facilitate payment to that individual. Once you've entered your bill, click Save. Then select the option Schedule Online Payment to proceed. If you are paying your first bill, there are a few things you need to do for setup. Click Continue to Start. Select the method that you'd like to use. The bank account and debit cards are free to use while the bill pay service charges 2.9% per credit card transaction. I will take you through how to connect with your bank account. You can connect instantly to schedule transfers immediately or verify with deposits option. If you choose that option, you'll receive two micro deposits, less than $1 amounts from Melio in one to two business days. Once you receive those two amounts from your bank account, you can verify your bank account within your bill pay settings. Here's how. Go to settings and search for the bank account you'd like to verify. Select the verify account link then enter the two deposit amounts you receive. I will choose to connect instantly. A pop-up shows Melio uses Plaid to link your bank. Click Continue. Choose your bank. If you don't see your bank listed, exit out of the screen and click Connect Account Manually. Enter your routing number and account number of your checking account to register. Save and continue. In one to two days, you will verify two small bank deposits. If your bank is listed, enter your online login credentials, answer any security questions, then you will need to verify your identity. Once you verify your identity with a code, you will choose which account, if there are more than one, to link to. I also had to enter my routing number and checking account number to confirm the account. Once that is completed, you will get a success message that your account has been successfully linked to Melio. For future transactions, your selection will be kept so that you don't need to enter your details again. Choose how your vendor would like to receive the payment. If you choose bank transfer, it takes three business days for your standard delivery, four business days for payments over 100,000. You would enter your vendor's routing number and account number to process the bill payment. Then click to save bank details. If you choose standard paper check delivery, 
It will take typically five to seven business days via USPS. If you choose to use your debit card or credit card to ACH, it takes one full business day. There is also an option for fast check. With that, it will take three business days sent by FedEx and that is charged at a flat $20 fee. You can provide the name to be written on the check and the address. Bill Pay Service will deliver the check on your behalf. For future transactions, your selection for the vendor's receiving method will be kept so that you don't need to enter any of the information again. Next, we'll want to select a schedule date. You can select today's date, as long as it's before 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, or a date in the future. The payment will be deducted from your account on the day that you choose. Review the payment, review all the payment details, make sure to schedule the payment. Your bill will be automatically marked as paid for the future date. In our second example, we will go to pay bills and pay by credit or debit card. Select pay bills from either your home page or from vendors at the top of the toolbar. Select a bill or bills that you'd like to pay. From the methods dropdown, select schedule online payment. Then select pay selected bills. I'm going to select credit card for payment. Enter your credit card number, valid through date, and CVV number. The same information is entered if you choose to pay by debit card. Click Save My Card and continue once completed with your entry. Add any cardholder details, click Complete and Save. Next, link activity to matching credit card account in QuickBooks. If there is no matching account, then allow QuickBooks to create one. Choose Link My Card, choose Continue. Choose whether to send the payment as a bank transfer to your vendor's account or choose whether to send a paper check. If you'd like your vendor to choose their own preferred method, you can select Ask a Vendor for Payment Details. If you select this option, we'll send an email to your vendor with a secure link through which they can choose their preferred payment method and enter the ACH or paper check information themselves. Once your vendor has entered the information, you'll be notified via email. If you choose to use your debit card or credit card to ACH, it takes one full business day. If you choose standard paper check delivery, it typically takes five to seven business days via USPS. For future transactions, your selection for the vendor's receiving method will be kept so that you don't need to enter again. For a bank transfer, you need to enter the vendor's routing number and vendor's account number, and then confirm the vendor's account number, then save bank details. To send a check, enter the name to show on the check, click continue then the address of the vendor to mail the check to. Submit once information is complete. Select a schedule date. You can select today's date if it's before 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or a date in the future. The payment will be deducted from your account on the day that you choose. Review all the payment details, and then finally make sure to schedule the payment. 
your bill will automatically be marked as paid for the future date. You will receive an email notification when your payment is scheduled and when it begins processing. Your vendor will receive a notification when the payment is out for delivery. The email address used is the same that you would have used to create your Intuit account. You can also view payment details from within QuickBooks. Here's how. On the bill that you paid, select the option to view online payment. You can select to view, edit, or cancel your payment. You may edit or cancel your payment anytime before the payment begins processing on the selected schedule date. Once the payment has begun processing, you'll no longer be able to edit or cancel the payment in bill pay. If you need to view or edit your vendor's delivery information, you're able to within bill pay. You would select settings located on the page header, select vendors, and scroll through the list to locate the correct vendor. Select the vendor, then select delivery methods. Select the more options menu to edit the delivery method you want. Select edit, then input the new delivery information if necessary. When you're done, select save. For any bill payment sent out, by paper check, you can view the check number by doing the following. You would select the View Online Payment button within the Bill Payment in QuickBooks Desktop to load the payment details. Scroll down to the Vendor Receive section and you'll see the check number listed. Keep in mind that the check number is only generated once the check has been printed and sent out from Melio's bank. Another thing to keep in mind that bill pay doesn't have the option for partial payment, but you can create separate bills of lesser amounts or edit the total bill amount and select save and schedule payment. Intuit's development team is currently working on the partial payment option and they plan to implement it later this year. Another thing to keep in mind that bill pay does not have a bulk payment option, meaning it is not yet possible to combine multiple bills into one payment. But you can schedule your payments in batches. This allows you to schedule multiple payments at once instead of one at a time. To do this, you go to the Pay Bills in QuickBooks Desktop, select the bills you'd like to pay, then select Schedule Online Payment. When ready, select the Pay Selected Bills button. You can schedule up to 20 bills at once using batch payments. Currently, Bill Pay can only facilitate domestic ACH and paper check payments within the United States. Intuit's development team is currently working on international payments and they hope to implement it later this year. The bill pay service doesn't carry any extra subscription fees. It is included as a free online offering with your current QuickBooks desktop product. As you've heard me mention before, Melio processes the payments made through bill pay on QuickBooks behalf. There are two steps in the payment process. First, Melio collects the funds from your bank account or card. Then, Melio's bank sends the payment amount out to your vendor for delivery. For payments sent by paper check, Melio's bank prints and sends the check out in the mail. If you need help, you can contact support and reach out to Intuit Bill Pay, powered by Melio, at support at qbdtusers.melio.com. You can also send them a chat message. Within Bill Pay, you click Select Need Help. Located on the page header, then select Send Us a Message in the chat dialog that opens. 
the average response time shows in the chat window. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when I make another video. Thank you, everybody.